dentin dysplasia. The inheritance pattern of dentin dysplasia is autosomal dominant. How can we remember that? This is quite simple. Let's look at the words dentin and dysplasia. They both start with the letter D. D stands for dominant. Now let's move on to the types of dentin dysplasia. We have two types, type 1 and type 2. Again, dentin dysplasia has not only one, but two Ds. This means that it has two Ds. These two Ds should mean that it has two types, type 1 and type 2. Till now, it's quite simple, very straightforward. Now let's look at the radiographic appearance of dentin dysplasia. Dentin dysplasia type 1. The pulp chambers and permanent teeth are crescent shape. Dentin dysplasia. Look at the D. What does it remind you of? It reminds you of a crescent, right? How does it look like a crescent? Here is an illustration. Here is the stick and here is the crescent. So dentin dysplasia type 1. We will look at the first letter, which is a D, and the D is crescent shape. In dentin dysplasia type 2, the pulp chambers and permanent teeth are thistle tube shape. Now, here we start to mix up a little bit between type 1 and type 2. Let's look at type 2. The 2 here looks like a tube it looks exactly like a tube so now we know that type 2 is tube shaped while type 1 which is the 1 D the D is crescent shaped another radiographic characteristic is that dentin dysplasia type 1 presents with normal coronal enamel and dentin while the roots are the problem all right and in dentin dysplasia type 2, the root length is normal while the problem is in the coronal part. How can we remember these and not mix up between the 1 and the 2, which one is normal and which one is the problem? Here, let's look at this tooth and let's look at the number 1 in type 1. The 1 looks like a root. It is thin, just like the root, while the number 2 looks like the crown. If we place it here, it fits perfectly. So in the exam, just make a quick sketch. The 2 goes in the crown, and the thin one goes in the thinner part, which is the root.